，欢迎大家到旧金山州立大学参加我们今天的文学活动《美丽岛的故事》。My name is Frederick Green, and I am assistant professor in the Chinese program here at San Francisco State. And it's my pleasure to welcome you all to San Francisco State University and to welcome you to our event, Tales from a Beautiful Island, with Hong Chunming, Paul Goldblatt, and Sylvia Lin. 我想大家已经看到，我们这里啊，太上有一个空位，那个空位是黄春明老师的。大概一个月前，我们收到一个很不幸的消息，说是黄老师的淋巴癌。他虽然非常希望来多金山参加今天的活动，但是因为他的医生都劝他。不要远游，他最后呃最后只好放弃。You might notice that we have an empty chair here, and it's of course for uh Hong Chunming. And some of you might have heard that he was only very recently diagnosed with lymphoma, and thus cannot be here with us in person. But I promise you that he will be here with us this afternoon in some other form or shape. So he's be patient. 可是，虽然他不能亲自来到这里和大家见面，黄老师今天还是啊，会以另外一种方式参加我们今天的活动，请大家耐心等候。Um, before、oh、my God, what's the problem? What's the problem? <laughs> Uh, before I'm going to introduce our guests, uh, I wanted to take a minute to, to thank some individuals and in some institutions who made this event uh, possible today. So we would like to thank especially the Tiger Economic and Cultural Office, Tech in San Francisco, who's been, who's been supporting our events for many years. Uh, the San Francisco State University Chinese Flagship Program, the San Francisco State University Confucius Institute, and the San Francisco Intercontinental for sponsoring this event. And I also would like to express a uh, very warm welcome to Dean Sherwin, who's uh, come back out of retirement to join us for yet another Taiwan Literature event. event. Now, it's my great honor to welcome back to San Francisco State Professor Howard Goldblatt, or Gil Howen, as he's known in Chinese, a widely published scholar and world-famous translator of Chinese literature. And what's even more important, a graduate of this year institution of ours and former faculty member of our Chinese program. Gil Haowen Teoshou, not just a world-renowned Chinese literature professor and translator, he is also a very important teacher of Chinese literature. He is a very important teacher. 还是本校的教授，从一九七五年，啊，到一九七呃八七年，在本校中文系教书。Now, when I started to study Chinese language and culture almost twenty years ago, Howard Goldblatt was one of the first scholars to really leave an impression on me. His study of Xiao Hong, this one, was probably the first academic book on Chinese literature I read. And his translation of Xiao Hong's novel Marketplace, uh, an early favorite of mine, long before I could have dreamt of ever reading it in Chinese. Who translated it? Howard Goldberg, of course. Goldberg, to me, was a very important teacher. I have read his books about the writer Xiao Hong. I have read his translation. 啊，呃呃，小红的书包括《沙士杰》《生死长》是这个啊啊《呼兰河传》等等。我第一本用中文看完的小说是陈若溪的《李县长》，花了不少功夫，后来才知道是白飞的，因为这篇小说是哥浩文已经翻译过了。After Chen Yuan's 1987 movie Red Sorghum, everyone in the West wanted to read the novel the movie was based on. Good thing Howard Goldberg had already translated it, along with a bunch of other books by 
moyent. Actually, I have a bunch of them here. Moyent, Kentang, Suan Kai Zhi Ge, Hong Gao Yang Jia Zhu, Shen Si Pi Lao, and other books are all written in the book. I have read it all. 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 书架发现了一共有十六本他翻译的书。江龙的《狼图堂》，The Wolf t o l d 江龙，西藏作家阿莱，呃呃，《The Red Poppies》，呃，看看，还有一些，呃，呃，还有呢，杨绛的呃呃呃，干下六七，现在没带来。王朔的小说，这些我都带来了，啊，他都翻译过了。Now, um, maybe the more meaningful question is, who has he not translated? What I think is so valuable about Howard Goldberg's translation is his endless drive to discover new literature or new literary voices, both from China and from Taiwan. The Yang, uh, where is she? <laughs> A feminist writer. Uh, from Taiwan, or the post-colonial uh, writer Zhu Tianwen, are just two examples. Taiwan Zhuajia Yu Lian, Zhu Tianxin, Wang Zhenhe, and of course Huang Chunmian. Can't understand Chinese people are because of the Ge Hao Wen translation, can have the opportunity to study Chinese literature. <laughs> so, <laughs> so all of us in Chinese studies feel immeasurable gratitude to him because without him, we would not be able to read that much Chinese fiction as we do. Simply because reading a 500 page novel by Jia Pinghua uh, or others in Chinese is really, really hard labor and takes a long, long time. Uh, I wanted to tell you a little story. My first Chinese name when I started to study Chinese was Ge Fu Lai. She was the first Chinese teacher to teach me Chinese. Now, when I arrived in Taiwan to study abroad, everyone kind of chuckled when I introduced myself. And I said, Ge Fu Lai, is it a little bit of a joke? And it's a little bit like a joke, a little bit of a joke. They were laughing at that name because it kind of sounded a little, you know, like a, like a peasant. Also, there's a, little, a dog that's named after it. has a similar name. Anyway, I had to change my name. And another teacher of mine came up with a new name. Now, what the other Chinese means is just Ge Hao Ge. Yang Ge is just Zhuge Liang Ge. Then, because my middle name is Herman, that is Hao. Then Ge, I was originally a German, so Ge is just English German. So what I soon realized, however, was that my new Chinese name, Ge Hao Ge, was almost the same as the Chinese name of Hao Gola, Ge Hao Wen, which is still about one character. So naturally, people in China and Taiwan started to ask me, are you the younger brother of Ge Hao Wen? I don't know, but you're not the one who's the one who's the one who's the one who's the one. 文学巨人有关系。啊、uh, ，However, as time passed, I started to realize that having another elder brother wasn't a bad thing at all. 我发现这样的五界其实很快，我可以沾他的光。啊、uh, ，我第一篇学术性文章是在一个叫《Modern Chinese Literature and Culture》的杂志发表。杂志是葛浩文三十年前在本校创立的。是不是因为当时的编辑怕拒绝我的文章的话，我哥哥哥浩文会不高兴，才不印我的文章。And take my current job, I'm supposed to say, I still think it's only that they hired me when you guys hired me because you thought so highly of my elder brother, Ge Hao Wen. So Ge Hao Wen didn't come alone today. Um, a few years ago, I I heard. Uh, a talk, a, a keynote speech by Professor Goldblatt, and an audience member asked how from all the wonderful books that are being written in Chinese, you manage to pick the one suitable for translation. 
and you reply that you are blessed with a most wonderful colleague and co-translator who is a fast reader with a sharp literary eye. That person also happens to be your wife, Professor Sylvia Lin, who is also here today, sitting next to Howard. Sylvia Lin is a writer and translator, and like Howard, a product of the Bay Area. She received a PhD from Berkeley in Compressive Literature, and, and her translation with Howard Goldberg of Tintin's uh, Notes of the Desolate Land, Hong Nan Shou Qi, is some of his pile, um, <laughs> won the National Translation Award. Now, when we heard that uh, Hong Chunming was not going to be able to join us, Sylvia immediately offered a help uh, and, and volunteered to jump in. And I, I, I would like to ask everyone to join me for a really warm round of applause. Uh, Thank you for volunteering for that. Okay, well, uh, I know that you're not really here to listen to me, so. I'm going to pass over the microphone to Howard Goldblatt, and I'm going to ask Howard Goldblatt to ask uh, to introduce our guest in absentia, Hong Chun Ying. Uh, thank you, thank you, and I, I have to say, first, it's just a real delight to be back here. Um, I've been crazily pointing out all these highlighted. Seeming spots of San Francisco State, only about half of which is still here. Um, and getting reacclimated, I had a wonderful phone call conversation with Nancy McDermott, who was uh, uh, Dean Sherwin's uh, predecessor, one removed or one um, And uh, she was happy that I was here and sad that she couldn't be here. She was off uh, beating the bushes for an electric uh, uh, votes for various. Uh, failed uh, candidates for office, and um, so I've tried to get Sylvia acclimated a bit, San Francisco State. Um, these really were about the best years of my career. They were the earliest years. This was my first job, and I was here for 74 88, so I was here for over uh, a decade, well over a decade, and um, I was, I was running to leave. Uh, to be quite frank, I got a better offer. Um, and so I went someplace else. And in academia, you really have to move a bit. Uh, you don't want to stay in one place too long. You, don't get, you, know, you, you, you get a bit stale. So, um, but I was delighted to be able to come back, particularly since this really is all about functioning. Um, a dear friend I met for the first time, probably the year after I came here, 1975 or 76, after I had translated a uh, story by uh, Fleming, uh, Sayonara Zaijian, and I had it published in Taiwan. He literally showed up on my doorstep without any notice, knocked at the door and said, they need to call them on. And then I am going to say, oh, you, I see, come in. And we've been friends ever since. Um, I call him Ali. He calls me Ali. <laughs> Ali is from my first Chinese name, Guobule when they just put gold right into whatever they could. <laughs> and he kind of liked it. He likes the other one better, but he's something to still call him Bogule Ali. So if you hear us talking Ali Ali, then you know that, that we're just, we're just uh, doing what we do in Taiwan. Ongoing is the only Wenxia uh, uh, national literary national treasure in Taiwanese history. He is the first and only. He is an absolute treasure. He not only writes fiction, has been writing fiction since we're going to read some, he's going to read some, since 1965, I think, 66, uh, still is writing. But he writes children's plays. He's a director of plays. For a while, he was selling bottled water. He does it all, and he does it better than anyone. And he is, he's a humanist of the first order. Um, and to prove that, he is frequently in trouble with governments here and there. And that's always good news. Uh, he escapes usually unscathed, but never un but, but unbowed. Um, Trumping's stories tend to be characterized as <clears throat> Xiangtu, which is regional, nativist, local. Um, it's, a, it's a decent understanding, but it's not comprehensive. It's not complete. He actually does a great deal more than just that. Um, I just assume not spend a whole lot of time talking about him because I'd like to bring him up if at all possible. 
uh, if he's there. I know he's very sick. Uh, I was very sad to hear that uh, he, uh, he was diagnosed with a, with a very unpleasant form of cancer. Uh, and yet, he's indomitable. He has a great spirit. He's uh, 80, do you know his age? 82? Uh, 80, 80, 82 years old. And he, he doesn't look, he doesn't act it. Uh, I haven't seen him since, since he was diagnosed, so I'm, I'm looking forward to this with a bit of trepidation, but a great deal of joy to see him again, at least um, on, uh, on the screen. Um, Sylvia had, Sylvia met Trimming, when? She doesn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> at some point, and being Taiwanese and Trimming being Taiwanese, uh, they, had a, they, had a, they had a language they could, they could deal with, uh, and, and Trimming's wife. So they hit it off immediately, and uh, there we are uh, in Taipei. About three years ago, I guess we were in. We were there. They came. And I have some anecdotes about this, but I'll say you that suffering. Uh, I've been mean, king of anecdotes, and I'll try to keep them to a minimum. Um, so, so um, he's not here yet. What we could do is we could have the pre-recorded welcome to the audience and play that. And then once he comes in, have him read out the story. How? Just one more question. You said he's a national literary treasure. Is that a, a title that was bestowed upon yes. him? Yes. Well, uh, yeah. okay. and he, was, he was designated. There was a big ceremony. I think the president was involved. The president of uh, Taiwan. Uh, it's yeah, it's the real deal. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, the um, you know we're waiting for him to connect via Skype. We have uh, a former student of this. Institution, a graduate, another graduate of the Chinese program, Chao Yi Wu, who, um, who helped us these past weeks to sort of connect with him. She helped him set up the, uh, the internet, the Skype, and she's on her way to his house. It's six thirty in the morning there, and it's, you know because of the time difference, she she just sent a, a, a Skype message when she left the house half an hour ago, <laughs> and then she ran away. Uh, she'll be there any minute. <laughs> But we had a pre-recorded reading from Hong Shun in the last week. So why don't we just play that um, while we wait for him to um, see. And Chris is going to help us translate that. Today, but today, this is the best I can do. 